pretty unique event in the world, I think, because you don't have any other road race other than rallies, of course, but, um, you know, we have the short stages of uh, fantastic driving through the woods. It's tremendous. I love Target Tasmania. There's nothing like this in, in the States. You either have old car events, which are kind of nice, and or else you have really hardcore rallying, which is exciting. This is the only event in the world that combines the two. Just about any automotive enthusiast can find something to do in Target Tasmania, and I love it. I'm about ready to take out papers and learn how to talk properly. But I oh, know it's just historically correct that Chrysler's and Bentley's were competitors in the 20s. And uh, that's prevailed and persisted ever since. Air condition, full flow ventilation, um, and we can reduce that if we wish. We don't use the RII in word either. So it's something to be avoided. But, uh, we're actually fairly lucky, Jim and I, of all the open cars here, we think we're probably the only two that can uh, put a, a hood up if we need to. Uh, How long to take the Pachur up? Uh, about. Um, Half an hour. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll now ask John Large to cut the starting ribbon and officially open the course for Targa Tasmania 1996. Three. Ladies and gentlemen, the event now begins. 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fabulous 1926 Chrysler, built here... Day zero, 16th of April, 1996. We're off. Over 200 cars, over 2,000 kilometres. Let's hope it doesn't rain, fellas. Good luck. Here's an old friend. How many of you out there have owned one of these? The car won a 1960 Sebring 12-hour race. So, Revolto GT IR. Taking part in the event this year. The road book says the BHP Temco Prologue is a run through the wide streets of Georgetown with the road surfaces excellent for competition. <laughs> well, they don't look quite so wide from a car. And we get to watch for once, and it's hard to believe the first four cars have started at 30 second intervals. Jochen Mass is driving a million dollar Porsche. And he's still a million dollar driver. only competing for start positions but there's a, a certain enthusiasm for knocking off Jochen's time. Rex and Lynn Carr finally manage it by a fifth of a second. Robert White and Angus McLeod just shaved the Jaguar's time. And then lose out to Chris and Dee Stevens' ISO Revolta. And to Terry Daly and Bob Brill's Mustang.
Darcy Russell and Ross Warren managed to get a second under, but that doesn't last long. It's a Holden Monaro that does for Darcy. And then a Falcon fixes the Holden. The Everett's in their Porsche take over from Falcon. You can see the spectators lean back when Mark Parsons and Jane Buckman are coming. Jiro Kobayashi has a new Nissan GTR, or a newish Nissan GTR. The TR7's time stands for 35 minutes, until Rusty French beats it in one of his pair of Porsches. Rusty's time doesn't last as long, and it's the youngest driver in the event who beats it. At the end of the day, it's Jim Richards and Barry Oliver by a tenth of a second from Neil Bates and Coral Taylor. Oh, we're fairly flattered, but to be up in the top ten, it's, it's really good. So far, so good. Today to uh, be the first two-wheel drive car home. 
It's got a four-wheel drive, and if it, if it gets the traction, um, it'll be quite quick. Day one, and we're headed to Devonport and back through seven Targa stages. The first stage is Lagana. The times are easy, but it's raining hard. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh. Collection of cars. weather forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology Hobart. For the northwest coast in King Island, a few showers more frequent in the far west overnight. Generally cool with fresh to strong south to southeast winds. Burnie and Devonport a minimum of about 5, maximum about 16 degrees. Moriarty goes through farming country in the northwest. It's not hard, but you can go pretty hard on it. This one's dry for us. Great way to see Tasmania. I'd recommend it to anyone.
to me, I gave it to enjoy it. Um, I'd rather have five days of, of enjoyment and come last than have uh, three days of heartache and, 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 and no finish. The Trove's a really pretty stage, but the first part's bumpy and narrow and there's a, a dodgy left fork part way along. And somebody's come unstuck on it. We've been informed that the tide's in. In 1992, an Austin Healy went over the edge of this right-hander. Uh, we came through a bridge on Lagana pretty early on and it was all wet and as we just came around, came over the bridge and put the power down a bit early and the back slid out and uh, we went round and off through a fence on the right hand side. We've got a lot of power under there and we do need a clutch that's, uh, that's spot on at the moment it hasn't been. We've got a problem with a sensor and it's not running 100% so, so they're just tapping in that and see if they can rectify it. If anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong right when you don't want it to, before lunch. <laughs> we didn't even get lunch. Devonport's the hardest stage on day one. It has a bit of everything, ups and downs, flowing bends and some tricky crests and turn-offs.
Sheffield is a good deal easier. It's just about dry and it's very fast and flowing, but somebody's obviously found the limit, so there's a bit of a hold up. The rain's really starting to come down at Deloraine and it claims a couple of cars. Nobody's badly hurt. Uh, just off camera and uh, it's a greasy. Snapped out. It's the only piece of the road so everything that happens have a big rock in it. It rains all the way from Deloraine to Longford, so when they hold up a sign that says the Longford stage is slippery, we burst out laughing. But they're not kidding. Peter Fitzgerald tells me he has no trip meter today. When I ask how he manages without one, he says, skill and daring. Jim Richards and Barry Oliver are the only people who clean the whole day. Day two, we're going to Hobart via the east coast. A very early start for the front end of the field and we have a new stage on the outskirts of Launceston. Most people clean it. We've been asked a number of times whether we've got the, the, the Labrador in the back and the two and a half children, but we've left all those at home this time. They're all rev heads, these people. The right line on the sidling is absolutely vital. It's an important stage. It's nearly 14 kilometres over 200 bends. 
and if you can get through it on time and unscathed, you should manage everything else on day two. Some people thought it would snow today. Get that snow down here. We got a game to play. Give us snow on the side and we'll be happy. While most of the field is on the way to win a Lear, the emergency crews are still on the sidling, clearing up debris of various kinds. A road weather alert has been issued by the Bureau of Meteorology. Motorists are advised that strong gusty southeast to southerly winds will continue with locally heavy rain and poor visibility. Winnelia is a kind of mini sidling, and it's equally unforgiving if you make a mistake. There's always a rock wall or a tree or a drop off. is very deceptive. It starts off fast, then it's suddenly very tight and it finishes with a downhill slalom. St Mary's Pass is short, but it's another one with a sting in the tail. And of course it's slippery in the wet. It's a good appetizer for the Elephant Pass. The roads are quite grippy actually, it's not that bad, but it must be very, you know, a lot of hard work in the little open cars. You can't relax anywhere on the Elephant Pass. Every time it's fast, there's a sudden slow section. Every time you get a rhythm going, the rhythm changes. When it's wet, you're walking a tightrope. Everybody's getting a refresher course in smoothness. We're trying our hardest to keep up there, you know, we want to try and keep some of these uh, four-wheel drive cars honest if we can. Coming down Elephant Pass uh, would probably have been the best ride I've ever had in my life. Unbelievable, I tell you.
lunchtime at Bishano, which is normally one of the warmest places in Tasmania. <laughs> and I've never been so glad to see a cup of hot soup. Extremely slippery. Uh, the, the rain has been like wet roads are probably fine, but it's just been torrential downpours. It's been extremely difficult and very hard work. To everyone's credit, there's been very very little accidents at all today, so uh, what amazes me, the one dry stage we had yesterday, and, and that's where most of the accidents were, but uh, uh, I think the different ones so far is treating the wet how they shouldn't. The new stage at Cranbrook is fast and wet, and we're glad to leave it behind us and get to try a bunner for a blast around the streets. Try Bunner, the times are easier because it's a town section. But there's also a wider selection of solid objects to hit if you make a mistake. So we're all taking it easy. Unbelievably, it's raining even harder at Grass Tree Hill. And we get even wetter because there's a delay. The house has been flooded. Yeah, so they're stopping it for now. Can they bring some sandbags for us? <laughs> you want to take a look in here? We've got fish in the bottom. It's the last stage over the hill to Hobart and we all want to get dry. <laughs> I wouldn't be a spectator in this weather for anything. Day three, the Southern Loop, the Channel and Hewan. After yesterday, the rain holds very few fears for us. Is it raining? It's still raining. I haven't noticed. <laughs> this is a short day, but there won't be any easy stages. Still, at least the roads won't be greasy. Of course, they could be underwater. Mount Nelson's supposed to be the first stage, but it's downgraded to touring. For the southeast, Huon and Channel and Lower Duan Valley, cold with periods of rain and drizzle, heavy at times with a chance of local flash flooding, gradually easing later tomorrow. Fresh to strong south to southeast winds. You're still a Moss brother behind the wheel here. And he's handling the car absolutely beautifully. Go! One, go! It will become sunny today, I believe. Rain is stopping now. It will be good. okay. Oyster Cove is twisty, it's bumpy and it's narrow. And today, it's also slippery.
On a road where the alert has been issued by the Bureau of Meteorology, motorists are advised that periods of reduced visibility in rain and local fog can be expected overnight and tomorrow. Woodbridge starts with a steep climb with a couple of nasty crests at the top of it. Then we accelerate down a hill where the family car would normally use nothing but the brakes, even in the dry. We went very, very quickly. Overtook a Porsche on a hairy left-hand corner. We had a marker on the last crest, which was actually a fridge outside uh, one of the old farmhouses, but the bloke moved the fridge. He moved the fridge! <laughs> All right. General, water coming in from the high side of the road, down driveways and roads, etc., is going straight across the road, not down the gutters. So be careful, it's in general, right throughout the whole state. Signet is my favourite stage on day three. It has a bit of everything and there's plenty for the navigator to do. There's plenty for the spectators to do as well. One of the good things about Targa is that you can lose some time, carry out repairs and get going again. Most of the people who go off on Signet are soon back in the event. Came down a run there a bit quick, got in a little bit of understeer, didn't quite get it out quick enough, biffed the bank over the other side there and spun back around the other way. And the Black Reef pulled us up before we went fishing down the bottom. There are a couple of fast downhill runs, including the one to the finish.
Yeah, well, you know, we're okay and the car's really not too bad. I think it's highly unlikely that we'll um, get back out after lunch. I guess that it's all over now. The usual lunch stop is underwater, <laughs> so there's a quick change of venue. I'm impressed by how well it's organised. The competitors aren't the only people who are smooth in the wet. Good, thanks. I've got a mini off 700 metres from the start. Driver left. You can see it, it's at Knobs Road. Okay? Longley takes us back to Hobart along the edge of Mount Wellington. It's quite often wet, even in the dry, so there aren't many surprises on it. Ridgeway Park is an old hill climb track in the Hobart Water Reserve, which seems an appropriate place to finish the day. It's very steep for the small cars. The trickiest bit is a T-junction about halfway up where you're trying to keep a bit of speed and get around the corner at the same time. It's a good place for a sponsor's hospitality villa. Day four, the Northwest Challenge. It's dry at last. And on the windscreen of every car, there's a note asking us not to get too exuberant in the dry. The Hobart stage is another early start for the people at the front of the field. It's usually just called the domain because that's where it's held. Ten thousand people turn out to watch and they don't get soaked. It's short but it has a couple of corners that can catch you out. A T-junction at the top of the first hill and a lift near Government House that falls away from under you.
Everybody at the front is watching mirrors today. Jim Richards and Barry Oliver have started in the middle of the field so that Jim can fly to Melbourne and try to secure his NASCAR title at the Thunderdome. Terrifying the last two or three days when he couldn't see where he's going. Now he can see where he's going. It's even more terrifying. Hobart is basically a show for the spectators, and the fast cars have no trouble cleaning either it or the Colebrook stage, which follows it. For the northwest coast in King Island, areas of fog overnight and early tomorrow, then a fine and cool to mild day. Moderate south to southwest winds becoming light and variable tomorrow. For Bernie and Devon another new stage, this time through the township of Ross. It isn't raining, but flooding changes our route into town. Then turn very hard left. We start off in town and then go on a loop that takes us out into the country. It's narrow, but Everybody enjoys it, and there are no serious incidents. crossings is the first place a route instruction has ever told us to jump. When they say jump, we'll jump. the second new stage of the day is a short fast blind that takes us through Midlands farming country towards the lunch stop and we're back at Deloraine for lunch it's got old-fashioned tires wheels and brakes so you have to go quite carefully you can't charge into corners it's very slippery the first three days Old Targa hands love to tell you that the event really gets serious on the afternoon of day four. There are three big stages which are always mentioned together, Sathana, Guns Plains and Rihanna. The first and longest is Sathana. Some people say it's the best long section of tarmac road in the world. It's very fast and extremely demanding. And if you can go fast, this is one place where the road will let you.
Gunn's Plains is the shortest of the three at just under 15 kilometres, but it's every bit as difficult as the others. And the last one of the day is Rihanna. The road book describes it as unbelievably challenging. It goes up and down through three separate river valleys. The car is often airborne and not always at high speed. Unfortunately, there are a number of accidents on Rihanna. There often are. But this year, as the field trickles into Burnie for the night, it appears that one of them is very serious. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to have to inform you officially that uh, one of our comp competing navigators in the event was today involved in a fatal accident this afternoon on the Rihanna Targa stage. We understand that the car collided with a lamp post. The navigator died instantly in the crash. Motorsport has a long tradition uh, in dealing with fatalities. It's something that we travel with at all times, and although uh, nobody anticipates it, uh, it's nevertheless there. In the long traditions of the sport, the event will continue tomorrow, of course. Uh, that's because I've got no doubt that the competitor in question would want that to happen. I've equally no doubt that any other competitor in the same situation would also want it to happen. another whole day to go yet and it's probably the hardest day of the lot so uh, so I wouldn't you know I wouldn't be too too optimistic but uh, yeah we're in we're in the lead and uh, that's a good place to be going into the last day but uh, no really today is going to be just a day of um, I suppose not trying too hard but uh, trying hard enough so that the, the guys behind us don't catch us up day five it's traditionally wet on the Western Enduro and very greasy on Helia Gorge Earth, meteorology Hobart for the west coast, south coast and highlands, cloudy with some rain developing tomorrow morning, cool with freshening northerly winds ahead of a cooler westerly change tomorrow afternoon. This year the gorge is dry, so it's not the baptism of fire and water that it normally is. It's a mixture of fast early and slow later. But even on the fast section, some corners aren't as quick as they look.
Mount Black is the first half of the old Rosebury stage. It's twisty, but it's quick. It takes us into Rosebury for one of the shortest transport stages, just over half a kilometre. Eight k's in round the Ring River area. The new road surface is slippery. The hazard lights aren't working, so if you run with the lights off. Rosebury starts right in the town, but then opens out as we head off into the country. The minimum time requires an average speed of nearly 130 kilometres an hour. It's beyond most people, but doesn't stop them trying. Strawn would be the longest stage on most other days. It's a long, twisting way, 33 kilometres. But the road's in good condition. If you're good at reading the road and placing the car, it holds no big problems. Quite nice for a 50, nearly 50-year-old car to beat a 10-year-old Ferrari. Not bad. <laughs> Cross the finish line in neutral with the temperature gauge on 100. Perfect run. It means we use everything to the limit. Okay. See you later. Lunch at Queenstown fortifies us for one of the shortest stages of the day and one of the most notorious. The locals call it the 99 Bends. This is one place where there's no room for a mistake. It's a long way to the ground on the right hand side and a short trip to the wall on the left.
Mount Arrowsmith is one that everybody mentions when they talk about Targa Tasmania. It's nearly 53 kilometres, the longest stage in the event, and it's one of the fastest. So it's hard work for a long time, and horsepower is a big help. It's also long enough to be dry in some places and wet in others, so it pays to be careful. We get some rain on Taralea, which makes it interesting on the downhill run to the Nive River and makes it slippery everywhere. We uh, kept the old boot off the throttle pretty, pretty well and we just sort of cruised along. We now head on down the Derwent to New Norfolk via the fast, easy stage at Ellendale. New Norfolk, the final Targa stage of Targa Tasmania 96. And there are a few nervous tummies. A lot of Targa trophies are riding on this stage, some of them gold ones. New Norfolk is supposed to be easy, but uh, a spring has come up through the road and it's very greasy and muddy. And the beauty of it is, I mean, you're racing, you know, six or seven different races every day uh, for five days, and it's like getting in 12 months' worth of motorsport in a week. And um, the cars are fantastic, and uh, the navigator's doing a great job, but it's both our first time, so I'll be, I'll be here every year, every April now. I know what I'm doing for the rest of my life, so that's cool. You by the time we get to Rest Point Casino, it's getting dark. But there's nothing dark about the welcome we get. From Melbourne, Victoria, Jeremy Brown alongside one of the quick cars in the event this year. And everybody here on their best behaviour, please. Carol White and Nick Watson.
that people have that maybe the people at the pointy end of the field chasing outright positions don't necessarily take too much interest in what's happening back through the field. Can I assure you that as far as Jim and I are concerned, we are very interested in what you do in the field. What you really have to say to yourselves with pride is, did I give it my best shot? And if that's your answer, then as far as I'm concerned, you're all winners and I applaud you. Target Tasmania is all over for another year. But as they say in the States, it isn't over till the fat lady sings. Yeah. 